Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped. This week is gonna be a very, very busy week. I have a schedule from hell. Today I'm off down to Bournemouth to do a studio shoot for one of my clients. Then I have to drive up to Manchester because tomorrow I'm doing some more filming for a different client. And then actually I've got some stuff until probably the end of the week. So I'm away quite a lot. I'm gonna do quite a lot of miles this week. And therefore it's quite exciting to have this. <laughs> yes. So this is the key to an Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. It's parked outside. It's in the most epic spec. And I'm really looking forward to spending some time with a car that I have a great fondness for. I love the Giulia Quadrifoglio. However, it's cold, it's wet, and it's the winter. And I'm not quite sure this is the right car for this week. So here's the ride for the next week. And I must say, a completely blacked out Julia Quadrifoglio looks so mean. And there are some really lovely touches to this car. There's some really nice carbon fiber work just on that front splitter. And then again, down the sides, you can see just a carbon fiber, almost like a blade on the sill. Looks really smart. Uh, signature Alpha wheels in a lovely dark anthracite colour. Really important uh, four-leaf clover badge on the side and then walk around the back of the car and it's just so murdered out, I love it. Um, you've got a lovely little carbon lip spoiler. Really aggressive diffuser section. Now this is the model year 2020 car. Um, obviously I had the Stelvio just a couple of weeks ago and for me that car was a really good proposition in the winter. Four wheel drive, 500 plus horsepower, absolutely epic thing. This, this is gonna be pretty epic because I think my challenge for the week is what the rear wheels are shod with. Because what we've got on there are some Pirelli P0 Corsa tires. And a big challenge with that is they're not really designed for cold, wet conditions. Lots of power, rear wheel drive. I think the tires might be a problem, but let's load the car up and get on our way. We've got a busy week. Oh, it's a bit chilly out there. Okay, first thing we need to do is fire the beast into life and turn the radio off. So, um, first living with things. Um, I wanna use Apple CarPlay so I can use Waze. The car doesn't have wireless Apple CarPlay, even though it has a wireless charge mat just down here, which I think is a little bit, a little bit annoying. It does have TomTom Tom sat nav as its native satellite navigation, which is okay, but I really want to be using Apple CarPlay. So it's a fairly straightforward process of hitting Apple CarPlay, allowing Apple CarPlay on my phone, and ta-da, I am now fully ready to go. Be a bit cold this morning then. Now if you see my living with the Stelvio Quadrifoglio video from a week ago, you will know I raved in that quite a lot about the autonomous driving features and this car is exactly the same. In fact, the MMI is exactly the same. So I'm not even gonna mention it in this video. Safe to say though, that for a journey like this, it is brilliant. You just stick it in cruise and you let the car do most of the work. It is safe to say, that the Alfa Romeo Giulia has a very special place in my heart. I think it's a phenomenal car. I've been lucky enough to spend quite a bit of time in the Quadrifoglio. I've driven some of the other models and then last year I got to drive the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio Racing Edition up the Goodwood Hill Climb. So I do love it and I think there are many things um, about this car that make it very special. The one that if you've never driven one will strike you straight off the bat is the steering but also that soundtrack the steering feel 
in one of these is just absolutely second to none. It's so sharp and so precise. And that's what I love about the car the most. Yeah, it's true. You can love a car because of the steering. <laughs> However, this car is not the perfect car for me. It's pretty close, but there are a few things that I think could be improved, and that's one of the things I want to explore during this week. But we are very nearly at Bournemouth, uh, the studio where I've got a film shoot today, and then I've got to get in the car and drive to Manchester. Now then, I thought you might like to see just inside the studio where I'm going to be working today. Now, because of all the COVID restrictions, everybody in here is wearing a mask at all times. Although when I'm presenting, I will be taking this off because I've got a two camera shoot with an auto cue. So this is one of my other training um, clients outside of YouTube. Um, and what I'm doing today is fronting a series of training videos for a client around telecoms actually, but demystifying and explaining telecoms. And I've done a few of these now in this character. Um, so it's, I always enjoy coming here to PhotoWorks in Bournemouth. A brilliant, brilliant crew to work with. But it's a little bit different because the last few of these I've done in the back of a kind of van. We've had a kind of van set up here. Now I actually have my own workshop, which should be good fun. So we've got a two camera shoot, an auto cue going on this camera just here, and then huge amounts of lighting, and then this is my workshop. <laughs> The mobile signal analyzer will need charging before first use. When you plug it in, the power button will flash red. You'll know when it's fully charged because it'll glow red instead. This will take about four hours. Cut. Happy with gone. That? <laughs> Mate, I know. Yeah, look at this is my my this is your own, workshop now. My yeah, own right, personal so workshop. I'm, I'm so you see, this is the behind the scenes stuff. This is kind of one of my jobs outside of YouTube. He's doing this kind of stuff, and I love it. I'm working with the best guys, the best crew. I've got an auto cue driver, I've got two cameramen, I've got, <laughs> I've even collared in Andy who owns the studio to, to do the camera. Be on camera. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, you've got the full, your full team. The full team today, the full team. Two guys from the client, yeah, it's all good. <sighs> it's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. It, it's actually so late now. <laughs> <laughs> Massively mega crew today. So late now, I'm not actually going to be able to film anything in the car because I now have to drive to Manchester. It's only 250 miles, don't feel bad, it's okay. <laughs> but then I shouldn't have messed up my lines so much. But anyway, so yes, uh, so the next time I'll see you will probably be at the hotel later this evening. I've got a long journey in that lovely Alfa Romeo. Uh. <laughs> I'm so tired. So yes, that was a much longer shoot today than I thought. Um, I thought I might be away by mid-afternoon. Didn't end up leaving the studio till five. And then a 250 mile drive up here to Manchester for another day of filming tomorrow. Um, but I must say the Julia Quadrifoglio was a fantastic car to do those motorway miles in. I just sat there with all the kind of uh, cruise control and lane assist and adaptive cruise on and uh, and blasted up here um, and it was a very pleasurable drive and I think that's for me one of the things that that car is very good at is, is clearing the miles um, and clearing the miles in a way that gets you to your destination even after a full day of work like I had today reasonably refreshed and um, hopefully we'll put it through its paces a little bit more this week but for now I need to get some sleep, although actually before I do that, I need to do some prep for my midweek 180 this week. I need to sort out all of the names that are going in the prize draw. <sighs> no rest for the wicked. Anyway, I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> I might have a sleep first though. No, I need to do work. Oh. Oh, Good morning. <laughs> hey, I tell you. I had a good night's sleep, but it could have been at least three hours long. <laughs> so I don't think we've got a very long drive to where I'm working today. So hopefully we'll have a bit of a chat on the way and start to talk more about this amazing car. But the first thing I need to do is put today's destination into my sat nav so I know where I'm going. Now then, I've finished work for the day. I've now got about 40 miles of... <laughs> 
40 miles of traffic and road to go until my overnight stop this evening. But I've got enough daylight to just talk to you about the next thing, the next subject that I think we need to talk about with this car. I've mentioned already, I am a huge fan of this car, but I'm also a fan of its bigger sibling, the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. And one of the reasons I'm a big fan of that car is because it's four wheel drive and just has that little bit more usability when it's cold and wet and horrible. The challenge I have with this car is dynamically, it's sensational, the steering is beautiful, but because it's rear wheel drive, it is a little bit slippy at the back. And I have a couple of things working against me. The first one is um, it's relatively cold and actually it's 11 degrees at the moment, but so far this week, it's been far, far cooler than that. And the problem is this car's currently wearing Pirelli P0 Corsa tires, which are not designed to operate in these types of conditions. They're basically like blocks of plastic on the, on the wheel. They have such little grip when they're cold. You really do have to be very careful. And my normal kind of de facto setting when I get into one of those, one of these cars, is to put it straight into dynamic mode. You just get a much sharper throttle response, a much better engine note. But the problem is, it, it just becomes a little bit tail happy. And then unfortunately, race mode in this car in the winter with these tyres is almost unusable if you want to be safe. Now, if you want to be driving around and getting the back end squirming all over the place, feel free, stick it in race mode, you'll have a lovely time. However, it's, it's easy, and I mean really easy, to step the back end out without really trying. And I'm not a big fan of that, if I'm honest. This car either needs to be wearing a different set of tires entirely, maybe like Michelin's, or Actually, this is a brilliant example of a car that in the UK really needs to be running, running all season tires or maybe even full winters, just to give you a bit more grip and a bit more stability. If the temperature goes below six or seven degrees, most manufacturer summer tires kind of don't really work so well. The rubber compound isn't designed to work in those cooler temperatures. And I think this is a great example of a car that ideally you'd want to run on winters. It does sound really good in this uh, dynamic mode. However, I really, you really want to stick it into race mode to get that ultimate, ultimate noise. So for me, the, one of the frustrations of this car is you can only do that if you turn off all of the traction control aids and that just makes the car in most circumstances just that little bit too slippy at the back and that's why I, I prefer the Stelvio because you, in the Stelvio when I had that I literally drove around in race mode all the time and you get that incredible soundtrack all the time and this you kind of can't do that and so either <laughs> either make a four-wheel drive Julia Quadrifoglio, which would be amazing, or have a race mode exhaust setting without turning the traction control off. And I know you can code it out, having talked to people who've got these or have had them. There is a way of doing that, but I think you should be able to do that from factory. Because if you drive around in race mode, this is the kind of thing that can happen. See? That, that happens all the time. Ooh. Yeah, that, see that? <laughs> that? That's quite slippy. <laughs> see? <laughs> it's good fun. Good morning, everybody. Ah, <sighs> it's a bleak morning this morning. <laughs> my goodness me! I'm now on my way to Birmingham. It's a bit of a schleck, to be honest. It's a good 90 miles, and most of it is motorway. So I'm going to do two things on my way to my hotel. The first is I'm going to pull off into these services and try and demonstrate something that I feel is a fundamental flaw with the design of the Julia, especially the Julia Quadrifoglio. Now I have already tried to get this 
on camera and it's not easy because it's intermittent it doesn't do it all the time but to demonstrate it I need to find myself a really big car park oh perfect this should do I'll just try and do it here you have to go on to full lock and then just drive around in a circle on full lock It's not going to do it. Let's just try it up here. No, it's not going to do it, is it? <laughs> well, that wasn't very successful. <laughs> I will try again. Oh, hello. I got bored and turned off the dual carriageway. I just wanted to have a drive in this car. And we have some national speed limit and what looks like a reasonably twisty road, so put it into the manual flappy paddle I'm in drive mode now as soon as you get above about 4,000 rpm in this car you get this lovely induction noise it really is very nice and when you get on a road like this I've driven so many motorway miles in this car you do just have to be gentle with the application of the throttle be wrong it's a beautifully balanced it, it feels lovely as a car but on these very greasy wet slippy conditions you just need to be mindful of the fact that it is rear wheel drive I've mentioned the tires aren't the best and therefore you just have to be a bit careful It's got so much poke, this car. And that, forget all of the negative things I've said about this car. And actually, I don't consider those to be negative. I just consider those to be honest. And that, for me, is my job. When I get in a car and I have time to spend with it, I need to be honest and talk about the car. I mention the things, how it is for me, not just how I, I think it should be or how... You know the car manufacturer should want me to say things this is how I feel about this car it is not perfect by any means however god when you get it on a decent bit of road it's sensational it's just a very very special car this when you get it on a decent bit of road the soundtrack is it's just mega I don't know how Alpha can get it so right and so many manufacturers these days suffer with emissions regulations and their cars sound so muted but this just doesn't and that this is only in d and i guess this is this is the frustration i have i really want that race soundtrack but i want it with the stability control systems i get in d and if i could have that then this car for me would be pretty much perfect but actually no it'd be perfect if it was four-wheel drive what a sensational car that would be. Oh. Uh, now, good morning, everybody. Wish me luck because last night was very cold. There is now a layer of frost all over the Julia. I think we'd best be putting these tires to the test this morning. This is not the morning I was expecting. Definitely need a bit of that. Oh, the rear one's coming automatically. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to sit here for a little bit and wait for this very, very thick frost to disappear so I can actually see where I'm going. Right then, here we go. Definitely not a morning where I'll be putting this car into race mode. <laughs> uh, what's the temperature? It's minus two and a half, people. Minus two and a half feeling it's going to be a little bit cold now the other thing I might be able to do here is because it definitely happens in very cold weather is just demonstrate this wheel thing that, that this car has going on sometimes I can just, just here we go right ready you hear that
That is what I was trying to demonstrate the other day. It's weird. It's really, really bizarre. It's almost like the front wheels kind of skip over the tarmac. And it, it's worse in very cold conditions. Once the tyres are heated up a little bit, it kind of doesn't do it so badly. But for me, that, that would put me off buying one of these completely. Ahead. Yeah, thanks for that. I don't think I'm going to be going fast at all. Um, that would put me off buying one. And I think I could probably forget it for all the other wonderful things about this car. But I don't understand how, how it kind of, it must be a known thing, right? I can't imagine any test driver will get in this car, hear or feel it do that, and then go, yeah, that's all right, I'll sign that off. I don't, I don't understand that. <laughs> I really don't. Um, but that aside, everything else about this car is lovely. It's just a bit, a bit, see, there you go. That was a, that was a, a wheel spin and I'm in N and I hardly depress the throttle. These are not the tires to be driving today. Definitely not. Normal tires struggle below eight degrees. It's two and a half degrees below zero today. Celsius for my American friends. You've got so much to say for yourself. Well guys, as you can see, I am safely home after my week away with the <laughs> Julia Quadrifoglio. Did you just try and bite my feet then? <laughs> um, now then, what are my final impressions of the Julia Quadrifoglio? I, I love the Julia Quadrifoglio. It's one of my favorite cars, but for me, it is a flawed genius. There are things that I, I don't like about it, things that I find really challenging with it. The, the, the thing that happens when you're on full lock in cold conditions, the kind of bump Thing. I don't know exactly why that happens. If anybody does know, by the way, stick it in the comments below. But that, for me, jars every time I feel it. And, I, and, and it, it's not good for me. It would almost put me off buying one. That car is also, for me, very compromised at the moment due to the tyres it's wearing. In these colder conditions, uh, P0 courses just are not the right tyre. If you stuck a set of all seasons or full winters on that car, it would utterly transform it in the winter uh, and make it a far, far better car to drive. And, and I think you'd probably find yourself a bit more relaxed driving it because honestly, when it was cold yesterday in the frost, even in N mode, the back of that car would step out with too much application of throttle. You could, you could easily get wheel spin um, or the back end slipping out. And that, for many drivers, I know a lot of drivers want the car to do that, but I know plenty that don't as well. Um, the other thing for me, it's such an emotional car and it makes such an amazing noise in race mode. I just don't understand why Alpha can't just put a noisy exhaust button in the car and why to tap into that noise you have to go into race mode and then back all the traction control systems off and and whilst that's amazing fun to drive and in dry conditions it really is sensational in the wet in the cold you just it's just you have to be really on your A game um, and and again I know lots of drivers that that won't like that in the Stelvio you can drive around in race mode all day long even in the wet and it's not a problem but not in one of those but putting the negatives to one side, the positives are far, far more compelling for me. The driving feel of that car, the steering is beautiful. The gear change, super slick on the way up or on the way down. You can spend hours in that car as I have done this week. It's very comfortable, it's very quick. Um, you know, when you put your foot down in the right conditions, it just pulls like a train, over 500 horsepower, and you're just absolutely able to overtake anything you like. It's a sensational car to drive, and I think to look at, to look at it, it's beautiful. Every angle on that car for me looks lovely. I really love this car. It's one of my favorite sports saloons. It's right up there with the best from BMW M range and the best from uh, Mercedes AMG range. It really is a sensational, sensational car. Massive thanks to Alfa Romeo UK for letting me have it this week. And I hope you appreciate me being honest with you and not just saying, oh, this car's amazing, but honestly challenging some of the things I think could be improved on the car. But overall, love it. I really want one now. Anyway, as you can see, it's pretty cold. Head over to controlandshift.com, by the way. These beanies are quite new in. Uh, I think um, I've gone subtle on the branding on these, but anyway, I'm going to go inside and get a cup of tea and warm up. I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film, guys. But you take care. Drive safe. Come on, you two. Come get warm.